Hello guys, welcome back to Oxangel RC. The time has finally come to have a go at the MyFly Easy Fighter. I know a lot of you have been waiting quite a while for this and I do have to apologize for taking this long. But even so, what finally gave me the final push to open up the box and get it built was that mapping job with the Flying Dragon in January as it really piqued my interest into these large platforms with mapping in mind so I got around to putting the fighter together. But as with most other things, this is not going to be a standard build either. One of the reasons why it was so difficult to find the motivation to put the plane together is that these kits come completely in pieces. You have to glue and assemble every little bit and detail yourself unless you are willing to shell out quite a considerable amount of money to get it pre-built, which I certainly wasn't willing to do. That being said, working up the motivation to get the build going is the hard part. Once it gets going, it is actually quite the pleasant experience when you see how it is all coming together nicely. What added to the excitement about this was seeing and realizing how well and how smart this plane was designed, especially in regards to wiring and providing factory solutions to keeping everything as tidy as possible. The channels on the sides of the fuselage are big enough to route through even huge connectors, and the way they thought up the covers for them is awesome as well. The end results speak for themselves. I routed so many wires, including some 10 gauge ones for the motors, and it all looks so tidy and clean, it is an absolute pleasure. I also have to comment on the fit of all the parts, especially where plastic and foam meet. It has been done very well and it was a pleasure putting it together, since well-fitting parts also require less glue which helps make the plane lighter. I know this may sound ridiculous for a plane with an advertised maximum takeoff weight of around 11 kilograms, saving a few grams of glue is a crazy notion, but it all helps make it fly longer, and that is what I will be gunning for with this one, at least for the first few flights that is. Just in case you are wondering, the empty foam plus plastics, hinges, connectors and all the other parts making up the plane end up weighing 2090 grams, not including the glue or any cables. Once I glued everything together, and given that there were some parts left over since they had provided extras, weight went up to 2120 grams roughly. Overall, the build is not too difficult, it is possible to figure out where most parts need to go from looking at them and the foam, but just in case something is unclear, you can refer to my blog post on the plane, the link to which will be in the video description as soon as it is ready. I also did have to print out a few parts that were either missing or were not supposed to be provided in the first place, but I thought they are needed, so I designed and printed them out. Links for those will also be in the blog post. By far the most challenging thing to glue on were the motor nacelles as it required a few pieces to be assembled first, then inserted in there together while also applying glue and pressure on multiple spots, but it all turned out okay in the end. Can't say anything was really problematic or not fitting, I am happy with how well the plane came together, only delays did come from the time the glue I am using needed to dry in some of the places where I didn't use it as a contact glue. Once the fuselage was fully glued up and everything installed, it was time to tackle the electronics and more importantly, the wiring. I measured, cut and made every wire to almost the exact length it needed to be so there are no extra lengths left over that I would have to then wonder how to tidy up. Making a plan where to place all the components ahead of time does help in that regard, except for the radio receiver which was a mystery until the end and it shows. Basically, this is what it ended up like, before putting it all in the plane. Of course, a few components are still not done, but those were finished soon after. Since I didn't have anything better lying around, I used some 400 kV motors which were left over from my Y6 copter from a few years ago, and paired them with some high voltage Hobbywing 70 amp ESCs. The pair weighs around 220 grams with the shortened wires, which is less than I thought it would be. Motors, ESCs, aileron servos and most of the wiring is just under 900 grams, but I can guesstimate that all of the wiring along with the power module, flight controller, tail servos and radio receiver sits around 1200 to 1300 grams, which is decent given the motors and ESCs alone would be 440 grams 
and I have a good deal of 10 gauge cable in there plus some pretty big XT150 connectors. And then it came time to put all of this cabling inside the plane and make it look pretty. I'm quite happy how it turned out, clean and tidy. And then it was time for the really important bit, the brains of the operation, the flight controller. It just so happened that recently I got a pretty decent looking and solid feeling QAV X7 Plus flight controller along with QAV's Neo 3 GPS unit. It has been a long time since I've played around with the QAV gear. Last such endeavor was a long time ago with the Believer and even then they had these nice CNC housing for the PCB boards that looked pretty and shiny. So I was curious to see how things have changed and what do they have to offer now. Looks and functionality definitely remind me a lot of the Cube controllers, but this one is all CNC aluminum housing and weighs a bit more as a result. The benefit of this though is that even with prolonged operation, the housing barely heats up, which I assume could be in part due to the ability of the aluminum to dissipate heat a lot more efficiently. Recently, I've had a chance to play around with the Cube Orange as well, and that thing heats up considerably more in its plastic housing. But anyway, the X7 Plus found its place on the 3D printed flight controller plate and all of the wiring being precision made to length plugged in quickly and conveniently without making a mess. The space allocated originally for the GPS unit was right above the flight controller but due to the way the new 3's housing is made and where the wire sticks out of, it was not the best option where to sit. So I moved it backwards to the tail in the rear compartment should be well away from any high current wires which would allow me to eventually enable the compass and actually use it if the situation demands it. I stuffed the modified power module in the front compartment right above where the battery should be. I modded it with 10 gauge wires and the big XT150 connectors as well so stuffing is the correct term as it became quite bulky. Fitting the ESCs in the motor nacelles can also be considered stuffing even with the optimized and shortened wiring. Last but not least I added a 20 amp back to power the servo rail and also another 5 volt 5 amp and 12 volt 10 amp dual output back to provide power for other gear I may use later but right now it was used to power my SJ7 action camera which I fitted in the nose where the motor would usually go since that would be the only thing actually recording on the plane and that was the only location that didn't involve cutting, gluing etc modifying the nose to fit the camera. Also, that was necessary since I had not planned to have an FPV system on this plane initially. During the build, I decided to install the CEHM30 system on it, but right before installing it in the plane, it turned out that the ground unit no longer wants to power up, which was a real bummer and is now on its way back to China so they can try and figure out why. Last thing I had to tackle now was the battery, since those motors were 400 kV and that is a little low for a plane of this size, especially if I wanted to utilize my existing 6S batteries from the Flying Dragon and when you consider that I don't have any props larger than 11 inches that I can use, I thought it might be an interesting idea to go up in voltage. Luckily, I had some cells left over from the 21700 pack that I made for the Flying Dragon in January and there were enough of them to make a 3S pack of the same capacity which I can then wire in series with the 6S one for a combined 9S 30 amp hour lithium ion battery to feed this beast of a foamy. I got to work and soon after the pack was ready to go. Having two separate packs does provide a bit more flexibility in arranging them in order to get the CG balance right more easily, but also the provided CG hooks on the plane do help a great deal with that, making it super easy to check and adjust CG without having to hold the plane from underneath. Well done MFE for that idea. So with everything ready and working and balanced, it was time to get this puppy out to the flying field and see if it will work as intended. I was a little nervous because this is now officially the largest and heaviest plane that I have, so had no idea what to expect despite the limited reports that it flies very nice and the wings are pretty good and can bear a lot of weight. 
So, with a few cameras working to catch the success or failure of this endeavor, I finally mastered up the courage and threw the plane, all to take off of course, and nothing bad happened. There was a bit of headwind to help and it just pulled up and went on its merry way. I felt so relieved seeing how easy it went up and also playing around with it following the takeoff did reveal that it is quite stable and definitely not prone to tip stalling. I flew it around in manual mode, it didn't really need much trimming in any direction, which was nice. I have to say, it looks impressive flying by when it gets closer and you get an idea of its size, but it also looks as if it's on rails. Estimated takeoff weight right now is around 7.5 kilograms, so I guess that does make a difference in how stable it would feel, as it is also more inertial, which adds to the overall solid feeling of the plane. Of course, I then did the mandatory stall tests and the results were very good. Basically, this is what you can expect out of it in a stabilized mode with throttle to zero and a full up elevator not touching any other controls. It just parachutes down with wings perfectly level with zero issues or lack of control. The results were the same in both directions, up and downwind. Only the speed at which the plane was going would differ. I guess a 7.5 kilogram plane isn't as easy to slow down or stop as a 1.5 kilogram FPV plane, but that is to be expected. Next test was in full manual mode, again throttle to zero and full up elevator without touching any other controls. The result was the same parachuting in a straight line for a bit and then expectedly it entered into a long, slow and predictable turn which required only the release of the elevator to get out of and it came nowhere even remotely near a tip stall which was seriously encouraging. This meant that even if it suffers total motor failure, the autopilot will not find it easy to stall and crash it, which is always a good thing. Now that I was calm about its chances to survive the Maiden, I decided to let it fly on its own for a while and do something of an endurance run. However, the amount of time it was projected to stay in the air really was more than I had anticipated and as it turned out, I had to leave earlier than it was going to deplete its battery, so I had to end the test before that. I did come back to the field a few days later and programmed the mission with a few waypoints and let the plane run it for as long as it could. The day was perfect with very little wind, but that now meant that I was no longer able to catch up to it with my drone for some nice aerials. All of the aerials are from the Maiden because due to headwind the plane would slow down considerably while the Air 2 did not suffer the same air drag penalty and was able to catch up to it more easily. During this flight now, with no headwind in any direction, it was an impossible task. So I switched to auto, plane took off and got on with its mission and the hours just kept piling on. Because of the Dragonlink system I had telemetry working on my laptop and I could see what was happening and at some point I noticed that the ESCs were starting to cut off power to the motors due to what they considered a low voltage battery but sadly those ESCs could not be programmed to any lower voltage level but in any case this was low enough to also protect the battery. The whole flight lasted 3 hours and 46 minutes in which time the fighter covered 232 kilometers, which is now also the longest range and endurance plane that I own. I should have anticipated that though with a battery of almost 1 kilowatt hours of capacity. That is half of the capacity of my solar system battery in my workshop and that one is a lot bigger and heavier. Pretty impressive plane that one turned out to be. Only thing I have to wonder is how that tail assembly is going to fare in the long run, but I guess we will see. As you can expect, the plane is extremely easy to put together and take apart with these quick connectors and locks, which works really well and snaps in very easily. Literally takes no time to do either assembly or disassembly. Only thing I've yet to check is if it will still fit in its original box and styrofoam housing because that would provide a nice and safe way to transport it despite increasing the setup time a bit since you would have to also take it out of that box and holders as well but this is not really an issue for something like this. Now, I know a lot of people would say that it can probably do a lot better in terms of flight efficiency with other props and motor configurations, etc. And that is probably true. However, I have other plans for this one, which pretty much renders any other endurance trials unnecessary at this point in time. 
The important thing is that the plane flies and it flies well and that X7 Plus flight controller is absolutely brilliant, at least it has been for me. The new 3 GPS unit has also been performing exceptionally well and I've constantly been seeing 20 plus satellites throughout the whole flight. The important thing is that the plane flies and it flies well and for a pretty decent amount of time given its weight and size. Keep in mind that a larger size brings with it higher drag and I can definitely feel that here. The Flying Dragon flies at a higher cruise speed due to the smaller drag that it experiences but also I am pretty sure it will have a harder time than the fighter of getting off the ground with a 4kg battery which currently constitutes more than half of the weight of the fighter. But anyway, there is more to come, especially since the plane is still in one piece following the initial flights and testing. So if you are curious to see where this would go, stick around. If you would like to get notified when new videos are released, please consider subscribing if you haven't already and also hit that bell button so you can enable the notifications. Also, if you have enjoyed this video, consider liking, commenting and sharing it with someone who might also find it interesting. And if you really liked it and found it useful, you could also consider using the new super thanks function available on my videos to show your support and gratitude. Using any of the affiliate links in the description below to purchase anything from those websites will also go a long way towards supporting this channel at no additional cost to you. Another way you can support me is Patreon, the link is also there and I would like to express my eternal gratitude to all the people who have supported me so far in any way and will continue to do so. I wish you all successful maidens and long-range flights and I will see you next time.